What's up guys, in this video we're gonna break down how to be dominant. First we're gonna show you what being dominant is not, along with all the popular misconceptions that come with dominance. Then we're gonna show you how you can actually develop more dominant traits, and show you an example of a text interaction from start to finish, how you can text like a dominant man. All right, so first let's break down what being dominant is not. There are three categories that I really want to mention. The first one is being dominant is not being emotionally or even physically aggressive. You never want to achieve dominance through brute force. First of all, that's usually going to be illegal and ethical, but in addition to that, it's not going to be sustainable long term. So the girl should want to surrender control to you rather than you having to really take it. So when you think of Christian Grey or just really any dominant man, are they bullies? Are they, you know, badgering the girl into just surrendering? No, that's usually not how they are. They're usually very smooth, controlled, deliberate in their words and action. And that's what dominance looks like. The second point is being dominant is not the same thing as being pushy. So let's say a girl is hesitant to surrender control. The solution isn't to just keep badgering her or to keep pushing her or arguing her into it, right? That's not a sign of dominance. Usually the issue is actually gonna be a lack of comfort or trust. And what you need to do is take a step back, build some more comfort and trust, and then the girl is gonna be much more likely to voluntarily want to surrender control to you. And the last point is being dominant is not the same thing as being argumentative, right? So if a girl says something you disagree with, you're not trying to constantly argue and win every debate, right? That's not a sign of being a dominant man. It's just a sign of being an insecure jackass. So if a girl says something that's a little bit off or someone in your group says something that you disagree with, you don't have to argue with them. A dominant man is much more likely to just sit there if a girl is giving some shit and smirk rather than logically debate her and try to win every argument. Now that we know what being dominant is not, let's try to explain what it is. And I think this is important because a lot of guys, they wanna be more dominant, but they don't really even understand what they're trying to achieve and what it means to be dominant. So the way I would explain dominance is taking control of a situation slash encounter. It's a form of leading. And this is gonna be, at least in terms of pickup and sex, this is gonna be very enticing to a woman because a lot of women, they just wanna relax and surrender control but they don't want to surrender control to anybody. It has to be the right guy. So I think that in the 21st century, the majority of women, they don't want to be bossed around. They don't want to be told what to do, right? They want to live their own lives, make their own decisions. However, they draw a line when it comes to sex and things in the bedroom. When it comes to sexual encounters, they do prefer for the guy to be very dominant and just take full control so they can surrender sexually and just be their true submissive self. However, they don't want to just surrender to any guy, right? It has to be someone that they can really feel comfortable with. So this is the next thing that I want to mention. The whole dominant submissive relationship is 100% voluntarily. You're never taking it by force. The girl should want to surrender control to you. And this is going to require a basic level of trust and comfort. So I think that the whole dom sub thing really does start with some level of comfort and trust. Next, let's go into some specific things that you can do to become more dominant. So the first one is just generally practice leading and assuming responsibility. So let's just say you're out with your group of friends and no one's sure what to do instead of just kind of going with the flow. Practice leading, you know, throw out some ideas and if, just, you know, move things forward, right? Try practice being the leader in your group. Now, you don't want to be shoving your opinions down, you know, people's throat. So for example, if you're on a date with a girl and let's say you really want to, you know, go to this wine bar and the girl's like, yeah, you know, they don't just, they only have wine there and I really hate wine. No, we're going to go there because I'm a dominant man. You're going to drink what I give you, right? Let's not dominance just being a fucking retard, right? But so, you know, within reason, you want to practice reading and practice assuming responsibility. The second thing you can do is research BDSM because the best area to be you know, dominant in is in the bedroom. So if you're a guy who's never tried BDSM, which is most guys, you know, just look into it and see if something sticks out. You don't have to go balls deep right away and go from zero to you know, doing crazy you know, handcuffs and tie-ups. You, know, you kind of build your way into it. There's many different aspects of BDSM. There's bondage, there's dominance. You know, there's all kinds of various aspects and you can see which one appeals to you the most. And then practice with a consenting partner, which leads me to the third point. If you're hooking up with a girl, who is submissive, like most girls are, practice being dominant. Of course, assuming that she's 100% on board and is really into it, right? So that quick caveat. So for example, 
if your ritual is, you know, you guys make out and then, you know, you eat her pussy and then you start having sex, right? Add some more dominance to it. So have her beg you a little bit for it. Be like, yeah, you want me to fuck you? Yeah, you want it? You ready for this? If you do that, you know, most girls are going to get very turned on, assuming it's done correctly, right? So a little bit of making her beg is going to make the sex a lot better for you and for her. Another thing you could do is just have her call you daddy or poppy, right? Assuming that's like something she's into, which I would say about 50% of girls are. And another one is possessiveness. So this can be very attractive to women if done right. So you're having sex with a girl and you're like, yeah, you like you like you want to fuck you like this? Oh, yeah, daddy. Yeah, whose pussy is this? Uh, it's yours. Yeah, it's daddy's pussy. It's daddy's pussy. Yeah, who else gets to fuck it? No one, daddy, just you. So, like, literally that shit, if done at the right moment in the right way, can be very, very hot, you know, for the guy and for the girl. So, again, you know, assuming the girl is on board, practice being more dominant in bed. And the last point is text like a confident, dominant man. So, would a dominant man use a lot of emojis or send long-winded messages or quadruple text? No, not really. You know, he would have, keep his texting short, succinct, to the point. And so I'm going to walk you guys through an example of a text interaction so you can get a real feel for how a dominant man would text. And finally, let's take a look at a text interaction. This one took place a few years ago, but I want to go with this Larry report because first of all, I think it's a good example of how to text like a quote-unquote dom. But also in addition to that, uh, I think there's a lot of other lessons here. Like you're going to see how I calibrated when I took things too far, how I dealt with logistics, how I dealt with her being hesitant to meet up. So I think there's a lot of also good lessons here. So uh, this, is, uh, this is Bumble, so she opens me. And her opener to me is in Russian, but it says... Hello, dominant, right? So basically what she's referencing is that in my bio, one of the things I say is dominant. If you want more information on that, check out my video on bios, right? So here I respond with, I'm guessing you are submissive with a winky face. And now in hindsight, I would say a more dominant text would have been that without the winky face, right? She says, well, it depends. I say, trick question, you will be with me. So that's a very dominant type of response. Why are you think so? Because you're my type and a dom can always spot a good sub. Now, an interesting here thing is that I realized later on is that she's not actually a sub. So there's a big difference between, I wouldn't say big difference, but there's a difference between a sub and a girl who's submissive. The vast majority of women are submissive in bed, but only a minority of women are what we call a sub, right? So there's a difference there. I assumed that she was a sub based on her opener and just her look, but I was kind of read that wrong. And she says, I'm not that innocent that you might think. I say, there's nothing wrong with being innocent. I prefer bad girls, though. She says, bad to the bones. And here I say, I'll throw you my bone. Let's see how bad you really are. So <laughs> I like that text. She says, it's not Tinder, FYI. So what she's referencing is like, yo, if you want to hook up, go on Tinder. I say, you're magically innocent when I'm Bumble. She says, yes, sir. I say, oh, that's too bad. Well, I guess I can take you to Chuck E. Cheese then. She says, mm, I don't know that place. And then she says, oh, gosh, pizza joint. That's the power of not responding right away because there was like a two minute uh, gap here and she Googled it, right? So again, you don't want to be in a super big rush to always respond to the girl right away because you might get a double or triple text. I say, there will be a lot of innocent people like you there playing video games. She says, are you a nerd? I say, no, that's where I take good girls. So here I'm just having fun with this whole dynamic. She says, uh, wrong place for me, darling. If you're a Russian, that you know what I mean. At this point, I decided to drop this whole thread because I can just see we're kind of going in circles here. I might, I, in hindsight, probably should have dropped it like one screenshot ago. So here I'm going to move things forward. So a dominant guy, he's not going to dilly daddle. He's not going to just you know chat with her endlessly. He is you know after a certain point, he's going to go for the close. He's going to go for what he wants. And he's going to move things forward. So I say, okay, do you like wine? Yes, sir, and tequila. I say, you can come join me for some tequila, but you have to promise not to drink at all. She says, only neutral territory first. So here she gives her first objection. She doesn't want to meet straight at my place. By the way, I just moved from Boston. I say, cool, I lived there for a while. BU, which is where I went to university. I say, yes. She says, I lived there for two years. I say, small world, we'll have to swap stories when we get together. So this is like a type of soft close. She says, when? I say, I'm free tomorrow evening or Thursday. She says, I'm free after 11 tomorrow and I'm off Thursday. Here's another <laughs> subtle trolling. I say, do you have an early bedtime tomorrow? She says, I never do. It's Miami. I say, my kind of girl, let's get together around 11 tomorrow then. 11 or so. Where do you learn Russian from, by the way? I say, sounds good. I was born in Belarus, moved to New York when I was seven. Got it. I moved 12 years ago myself. 
Russia question mark, and I think I sent her a meme or something. She says yes, and they say shoot me your number, right? Because we already have the date set up. At this point, I do want to move it to text because it's going to solidify it more. So I believe I text her the next day with, hey, you. She says, hey. I say, still good for tonight, so it's a confirmation text. She says, let's meet tomorrow. I'm off all night. I respond with, all right, that works. But next time you switch up plans on me, I might have to spank you a little. And she responds back with three spanking gifts. So not the most positive response, but she's also not rejecting the freight. So this is the kind of girl that you don't want to go too sexual with over text, right? Especially because, you know, I know now that she's like a more traditional Russian girl in Russia, like guys are not like super sexual over text. That's not really the norm there. So I open her the next day with a BDSM or spanking meme. She doesn't respond to that. So I just pretend like it doesn't happen. At around 6 p.m. I say, what time are you free? She says, from seven, where are we meeting? I send her a picture of a bar where I like to go. Let's meet here at 11. And she says, it's too far away from me. So the important thing to keep in mind is, uh, and this is why it's important to understand various cultures, especially if you like girls from that culture, is that in Russia, like the man is really the one who busts his ass. You know, he's the one that you know picks up the girl, opens the door for her. So that's very much like a thing over there. And she is at her core, a Russian woman. So she's used to guys just doing things for her, swooning for her. She's also a very attractive girl. So that's very common for her, right? And so I'm making her come to me, which is not something she's used to. However, you don't wanna just give in. Like it's good to be reasonable and make accommodations to make you know the date work, but you don't wanna just constantly be giving in to everything that she wants. And for me, that's a hard line in the sand. Like I will, if a girl doesn't wanna meet straight at my place, I will happily meet her in public but I'm not going to go to a bar near her, right? Because that's just going to be suboptimal logistics. If she wants to meet in public, great. It can be a bar near where I live. So I ask her where she lives, and she actually only lives 15 minutes away from me. I say, Brickle, I got wine and all that already here. Just let me know if you need gas money. She says, I so here I'm just trying to go for my place again. She says, I can't go to your place. I haven't met you yet. What if you're a maniac? I say, oh, geez, I'm super laid back. Just bring some pepper spray, LOL. So that's one of Jamal's texts. Unfortunately, it does not work in this situation. She says, all maniacs say that. So here, the right call is just to meet her in public. If I keep pushing from my place, it's not going to work. I said, let's meet at that bar first then. It's right around the corner from my place. That might have been a little too much, that last, uh, <laughs> that last uh, sentence. But, you know, I really wanted to make sure this was like a solid lead. She says, I'm not looking for hookups, so I'm not going to waste, waste your time. Bye. So here, really, it's not so much that I'm being too sexual. It's more of the fact that she's getting frustrated that I won't come to her. Now, the good thing is that I never explicitly said that I want to fuck her, which is something I very rarely do. I like to give myself a little bit of plausible deniability for situations just like this. So here I say, when did I say anything about wanting to have sex with you? And that's the best way to handle a situation like this. Get her to question her initial assumption. She says, you did but why you didn't want to come my way. <laughs> so I guess all the guys who don't want sex come to her. A good sub would come to me. So here I'm still going for the dom sub dynamic because again, that's what she opened me with it. But she says, not me, and I'm not sub. And at this point, I've kind of figured that out. I say, I can't seduce you. So I try calling her. She doesn't respond. I say, I can't seduce you with my Russian if you don't pick up. And she says, you're creeping me out a little with your dom sub thing. So yes, she's probably right. I should have dropped it a few screenshots ago. I say I'm actually a shy virgin, but you brought it up initially, so I want to impress you. So here's just trolling. It's on your profile, lol. And then I respond in Russian, I, I knew you'd find me. Just playing. I won't talk about it if it makes you uncomfortable. So there's nothing less dominant about being accommodating. And like, if a girl is uncomfortable with whatever it is that you're proposing, it doesn't make you less dominant if you take a step back and build more comfort. In fact, that's what a real dominant man would do. And she says... I'm not driving to Brickle, so she's just being very stubborn. I say, okay, she doesn't respond. So I decided to hit her with voice memos as a last resort. I find these can be very powerful if done right. Unfortunately, most of these are in Russian, so you guys are not gonna really be able to understand them. But basically, you know, I'm just, I'm just playfully calling her out and flirting with her and saying how, you know, she's being a typical Russian girl, but in a very fun, flirty way. So we start going back and forth. Um, here, she's like, making a little, some accommodation. She's like, well, why don't you just rest at home and then you can come over here. Just going back and forth on voice memos. She sends me a video of her playing with her dog and eventually she gives in. She's like, okay, you know what? Fine, I'll meet you at that bar near your place, right? Because at this point I built a lot of attraction and a lot of investment. I give her the address of the bar and she says, what's the name of the bar? Red bar, 
Uh, I like speakeasy dives, so at this point, uh, the last text she says before leaving, leaving soon, don't make me wait. <laughs> so you can tell that she's uh, very much a Russian girl who's used to getting her way. Uh, so here's just logistics, logistics after our date, which ended at 5.30 a.m. So <laughs> we, were, we were hanging out for quite a while. Make it home okay? Yep, just now. Cool, that was fun night. Uh, just don't fall in love. <laughs> I don't know why she thinks I'm going to fall in love with her. Uh, I say, you're good. I take pinky promises very seriously. Oh, yeah, one of the things that I had to promise her before we were hooked up was that I'm not going to fall in love because apparently every guy she's ever been with falls in love with her. So, again, going back to the whole Russian princess thing. And she says, deal, I'll give you a call if I want your surfaces, meaning my dick. All right, hopefully you guys found this breakdown valuable. If you want to see the full LR with my detailed explanation of what happened on the date and afterwards, then go on playingfire.com. It's going to be under love reports. Look for the hot blonde Russian girl. Show me some love by smashing the like button, hitting subscribe, and make sure you click the bell for notifications because we have some awesome content coming out in the next few weeks. We got a live stream, live Q&A with Elliot Hulse coming up next Monday at 3 p.m., we also have Anthony Johnson, the founder of the 21 Convention, coming on and telling us who are the legit and who are the bullshit speakers and coaches in the Red Pill community. So that's one that's going to be very interesting as well. Make sure you check out our TikTok. We just launched it a few days ago. It's at Real Playing with Fire. And we're going to have a lot of TikTok-only content that's not going to be available anywhere else. So make sure you subscribe to that. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time.